Steve? Yes. Oh, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you applying for the job. Always. When's the earliest you could start, Tyler? Kyler. Mrs. Anderson? You can call me Marlene. <laughs> okay, Marlene, we appreciate you applying for the job. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Let's just dive right in. Boom, go. What's your availability like? I'm boycotting daylight savings time, so I'll either be an hour early or an hour late, depending on the seasons. Tell me a little about yourself. My mom says I have to get a job, so that's why I'm here, because she wants me to get a job. Why did you leave your last job? Of course, uh, Harry. He was, he was, I just felt like he was looking at me in a particular way. Of course, he was blind, so I don't know why I felt that. Why did you leave your last job, Steve? Fired. Next question. So what do you think you bring to the table? I can read people's energies. Let me read your energy real quick. Uh. You're a coyote. Congratulations. I don't run errands, and I don't answer the phone. You know what I do? I look hot. 24... Hot. Whatever you need, I can do it. Janitor, CEO, cook, I can do it all. And I have done it all. And I will do it all. Okay, so you do have experience in all of those areas. No, but I just believe I can do it. Um, so availability, you know, that's kind of a week to week thing for me. Okay. You know, I really just kind of like, we'll see, so. So what do you consider your weaknesses? Chocolate, candy, Snickers. Okay. Reese's Pieces. Um, Becky, I, I think we're done here. Do I get the job? All right, if you're, if you're struggling to find good people, if you're looking to find good people, then this is the show you want to listen to because uh, a lot of people, a lot of business owners I run into, they tell me I can't find good people, and I have never had a hard time finding good people. So if you're listening today and you're going, you know, it's hard for me to find employees, just know that it's going to be actually very easy to find employees once you master the systems we're going to teach on today's show. Because no matter how great your systems are, nothing will work unless you can find good people to implement those systems. Again, nothing will work unless they will work. So if you're out there today looking to find good people and you want to know how do you find good people, you know, how did Dr. Zellner and I staff the optometry clinic, a, a dog training franchise, a haircut franchise, a carpet cleaning franchise? How do we how do we do it? How do we find good people year after year? How, how do we do it? Well, on today's show, we're going to break down the specific details of what we do to hire, inspire, train, and retain great people on today's edition of the Thrive Time Show on your radio and podcast download. Grab the duct tape and mentally prepare yourself for yet another mind-expanding knowledge bomb from America's number one business coach, Clay Clark. That's it. Bombs away. Recently, I've had more and more members of the Thrive Nation asking me, Clay, what do you actually say at the group interview? How does the group interview look? Do you really interview all of the candidates at the same time? Seriously? Every Wednesday at 6 p.m., you interview everybody at the same time. How do you do it? When do you do it? Where do you do it? Why do you do it? How do you do it? What does it sound like? Well, I do it Wednesday nights at 6. Why do I do it? Because it's efficient. Interviewing everybody at the same time is efficient. Where do I do it? At our office at 1100 Riverwalk Terrace in Jinx, Oklahoma. Who attends? A lot of people. We have like 50 people confirmed say they're going to be at the interview. And usually 10 to 15 show up. And last night we had a great group of people who attended the workshop. And we found some really, really great people. And so now without any further ado, this is what our group interview sounds like. Okay. So I'm uh, Clay Clark. And uh, this is my office. And uh, we're hiring for a myriad of different positions. And I'll open it up for you guys to ask questions. So Justice, is that right? I'll start with you, So, because you're in the back. So Justice, uh, what questions do you have? Well, you said there's many different positions available. Sure. What position do you, did you remember reading about online? Marketing assistant. Okay, cool. Let's talk about that one. So marketing assistant. And feel free to take that in notes if you want. Um, Everybody, if you're looking for a product or service, you typically search on branding. I probably branding. I um, branding. What would you, what would you, how would you find if you want to go like if you're in Florida tonight, you're going to go to a movie or you're going to go, I don't know. What do you typically do to find Some people these? with a third party uh, vendor. What do you do? To search for That's right. See, so, so 94 percent of people who are in Forbes right now use Google for everything. Mm -hmm. But I think in any room. Like, 
1% of 1% know how Google works. So I grew up crazy poor, and I was in a company called djconnection.com. It still exists. But I grew up really poor. I was 16. My dad was delivering pizzas. I'm 38, and my dad was 38. He was delivering pizzas. He had a degree from ORU, top of his class, Tom Clark. And my dad just didn't know how... You know, he had a good business degree, but they don't teach business. And so my dad... We just grew up really poor. And so my whole thing was like, I had to find a way to not be poor. So I started a DJ company out of my dorm room. Do you know why I started a DJ company out of my dorm room? Because it was fun and you enjoyed it. And? What do you think, Justice? I think it's something that you love and you do, but you enjoy someone that is And I'd say I wish that it was that deep. It was like, I'm crazy poor. And the barrier of interest is pretty low, and most DJs are terrible. <laughs> so I'm like, even if I'm bad, I'm better than them. So I had a service called DJ Connection, and this is my pitch. Um, and your name is Barbara. So I'd say, Barbara, I'm going to DJ for your wedding, your birthday, whatever, and it's a dollar if you hire me. So it costs. And then if you're happy, you can pay me based on your happiness. So if a 10, perfect 10, I'd love to get paid $600 because everybody else charges that. But if I'm terrible... It's a dollar. And everyone charges four hours. I do unlimited time. And everyone's like, are you kidding me? I go, nope. And I help you plan your wedding first. So pretty much every bride at every wedding show said yes every single time. Mm -hmm. And I just grew it. And so when I sold it, we were doing 4,000 weddings a year. So it was like big, you know, 80 80 weddings a weekend. And then my wife pointed out to me in 2006 or five, I was entrepreneur of the year for the state of Oklahoma from the small business administration. She's like, you know, what you do works for other things. You shouldn't be a DJ. And I'm like, why? She's because like, you're a grown man. Like, okay, fine. So we have five kids, and I built that business, and then I started teaching people how to grow their businesses, but not in like a – and if you're in a multi-level, I'm not attacking you. I'm saying but not in a multi-level kind of way, not in a 100% commission kind of way, not in like a get-rich real estate kind of way, but like, hey, you're a chiropractor, and let's sell some stuff. Or, hey, you're a home builder. So now my client, we worked with um, uh, Maurice Canbar, who is the founder of Sky Vodka. You know, so when he bought a third of downtown Tulsa, if you look at my name, Clay Clark, Tulsa World, you'll see the articles. We helped lease. We're, you know, downtown used to be dead. We helped lease the. Re- the we helped basically bring tenants downtown. Here you go. We did we, we, the deals we did was a Lote was the first downtown restaurant, a Mayo Hotel. We worked with them with the bar and all that. Um, anyway. That's what we did. And so then people kept reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. And so um, now we work with 160 clients. That's the number, 160. 160 clients. Uh, most of them are not in Tulsa. And uh, Shaw Homes is the largest home builder in Oklahoma. That's one of our clients. Uh, Total Lending Concepts, that's one of our clients. Um, Barbie Cookies was one of our clients. Papa Gallo's Pizzeria is a client. Oxyfresh is a client. UPS has been a client. Maytag has been a client. So, Ben, come on up here, Ben. Woo, this is Ben. Yeah, let's hear for Ben. Yeah, Ben, yeah. Yes. All, right. All right. Now, Ben, where were you working at? So, how long have you been here? Uh, I've been here eight months. Before that, I was at Lowe's for eight months. And before that, I was working as a handyman for about 10 months. Oh, you shouldn't have told me that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's great. Oh, yeah. Can you do a lot? Is he handy? I, I've done ceiling fans. I can do uh, drywall and stuff. Yeah. I, I, I hate tiling. I hate tiling. No, no tile. No tile. No, no. no, no I, I just think no. we found... Like, right. My wife's been, like, praying for handyman. It's like, dear Jesus, can I have a handyman? But anyway, so... Um, and then, Ben, where did you start? Like, what was your role first? Um, I was uh, on the search engine optimization team. So I write the search engine content. So the content that is going to be going on to the, uh, the web page for all of the, all the clients... Had you ever done this before? Um, I thought I was illiterate. I like I think I got C's in English, <laughs> like high school and college. So I never thought I would ever be writing for my professional career. And then what do you do now? Uh, I am the SEO. I think I promote to Czar actually. Czar, I'm, I'm that's the, the title. SEO Czar. Very official. Um, so I manage a team of eight now, um, and they're writing uh, content all day long. So it's my job to make sure that the quality of the content's going to be good. Make sure that there's not going to be any duplicates because Google. Mm-hmm loathes duplicate content with a passion so I loathe it with a passion how much could you get paid per hour right now at your current per rate hour, current rate I can do about mm, 25 to 27 an hour questions yeah 
Yes. Okay, so you said you're writing. Are you mm -hmm. writing just writing like like a literary artist, or are you talking about programming? So I, John, not programming. I don't know that yet. Okay, but so um, like HTML. Yeah. So we like. use um. So it's called a Dragon Diction. So we just like speak it, and instead of typing it, because oh, that would nice. yes. that would take forever. Um, plus I can't spell. So, um, but then we just I just I just talk. Um, I just kind of write that content as in like um, two five hundred word articles. And let me tell you how this system was created, so you see it. I was building DJ Connection. I hired Bruce Clay, which by the way, eight grand a month is a lot of money. Contract twelve months. I'm not bitter about it, but it's expensive. I still pay him now, but it's like a lot of money. So you're like, I'm a DJ. Let me tell you about being a DJ. You make hundred and sixty seven dollars of profit a show. Could you charge six hundred? Mm -hmm. So you're you're not making like you know what I mean. You're getting like a after the, I pay the DJs and the equipment breaks and hiring and sales and marketing. It's about 150 bucks. Well, it's cool we're doing 80 a weekend, but it's still a lot of money. You know what I mean? So I'm going. There's got to be a better way. There's just got it. There's just oh, right. just oh, you know. So I try to make it really affordable. And so I used to type the articles, mm -hmm. and I wrote the best crap ever, man. It was like oh, and just you're gonna love working with our DJs because we have just I'm using big words like plethora, cornucopia. It's just oh, it's just you a fabulous. I, I was I was like working it. I thought I, I thought that's what mattered was the I thought having really good words was what it was at. I thought like just and my wife was like, have you ever asked women if they've ever read these things? And I'm like, because most people go to the website and call. They don't like read your 40 page manifesto about DJing. And so then I'm like, wait a minute. So that's when I came with the dragon diction thing. And then that's kind of anyway. So that's how that worked. But that any other questions for Ben? Yes. My quick interruption is two weeks, hands on. Okay. You're getting paid the whole time, but two weeks is about how long mm -hmm. it took you to. Is it my, my right? Time? Two weeks, yeah. And then to start off after two weeks, be joining your team. You're still getting paid on you're on the team right away. Yeah, we so we uh, I think there's uh, someone the their third day on, and so they're slowly picking up little by little. And we, uh, we had a young lady today who who is great, and I think her head was going to explode because it's like her second day or third day, nice lady. <laughs> but it's like you know you've never done it before, and it's like riding a bike. And unless you're a weird person, you don't mock babies that are learning to walk. Oh, look at the baby. Look at the stupid baby. You know, lazy baby. You just, you kind of coach up, mentor up. You know, you teach. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the vibe there. So you learn that. Um, and then one day Ben was like, hey, check it out. My wife is smart. And I go, your wife is smart. What is this? Smarter than me. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, well, let's meet said person. So I'm going to bring up your wife. Is that cool? Okay, cool. So you got to go in now. It's super bad. All right. Yeah. Right, this is Amelia. And she happens to be married to that guy. And can you explain your path? How long you've been here and what you do now? I've been here for about six and a half months. I started in Elephant in the Room Call Center. Um, and then I moved from there to sales. Um, and then from sales, I'm now in coaching. So I've got my first three clients this past week. So I'm doing coaching now. Any questions for Amelia? She's been here a while, but not super long. No? Six and a half months. Six and a half months. Oh, good for you. That's <laughs> a lot. She's over in the six and a half months. Yeah, no, she's yeah. going through very fast. She's plowing Ooh. through it, probably the mm -hmm. fastest rate of anybody we've had so far. So, but that's only because of Ben's her life coach and just like right. telling her what to do, you know. Uh, you teaching them starting them, setting up websites, and what do you like mean by pathways? Yeah, so Clay writes all the pathways. That's like their business plan. You, sir, what questions do you have? What is your name? Uh, Jacques. Jacques? Jacques. How do you spell it? Z H A J. Z H A J. Yeah. Jacques. Yeah. Uh, is that like a family name? Is this common? Uh, not very common in my culture, but. What does it mean? Uh, it means dragon. That's cool. Can you give them a copy energy. of Dragon Energy? <laughs> My new book is called Dragon Energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any questions for Amelia about that? Because she, she's here. I mean, that's why I have her here. It's because she can tell you. And you can ask her anything. Um, yeah. Do you, do you personally make a lot of cold sales? I did when I was... Yeah, yeah. So I did when I... When I it's kind of split now. Um, but, yeah. So when I was doing sales, that's what I did. I did cold calls. Can you explain who you were calling for, though? Yeah, so it's for a company called um, Digi Security Systems. Mm -hmm. um, they're a client of ours, so they actually contract out their cold calling to us. So I would call their leads, their 3100. So we don't cold call on behalf of my business. We call on behalf of our clients. Because a lot of our clients are afraid of the phone mm -hmm. at first. We actually explain to them, 
nobody woke up today with a desire to pay you. And they're like, huh? Like, nobody cares about your product. You got to go call them. And if it's a retail store, you got to get in front of them. You know, every business has its own path. But, if, but for Digi, they did the security systems for the gathering place. place. OSU. OSU. OU. 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 Be okay. And they get all their accounts by cold calling. So she's calling on their behalf, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. That's what the call center is for? Um, the other call center would be for Elephant in the Room. So that's um, Men's Grooming Lounge. I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, yeah. yeah, so mm-hmm. they're, no matter which location you're going to, the calls all come into us. And, then we schedule. and if you move to Denver, um, the company I've worked with for a long time up there, Denver, uh, my partner that I, he and I have uh, uh, Elephant in the Room together. The other business, though, is called OxyFresh, and there's 406 locations, carpet cleaning. And there's a major call center that books like 8,000 carpets a day. A lot of carpets. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. But inbound calls for elephant room, basically. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? You feeling good? Okay. And it's Ja. Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, sure. And what is your culture, by the way? You said your culture. What's your culture? Uh, Monk? Monk. Monk? Monk. And uh, where are you? How, as you, were you born here in this country? Yeah. Okay. Are your parents first generation immigrants? Uh, I'm not so sure that they Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Awesome. Excited. Jump. Okay. So, Ja. Yeah. Got Ja. You want a question? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious if, uh, if I could get the job, how long would I have to get everything in order to move up here? Because I don't, I don't live in Oklahoma. And what's your name? Roy. Roy. And you drove here from where, Roy? Really? For this interview? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. How did you hear about us? Uh, online. I saw something that said uh, it was about graphic design, and I looked into what the company was and did a little research, and it looked really great. So. Um, we have about half a million people listen to our podcast, so we have had, I don't think the workshops you were at, but Sean, were you at the one we had people from Guam here? Yeah, too. So we have people from Guam and Canada and Australia. <laughs> but no, I'm always amazed though, because you never know what the podcast where it's going to reach. You know, we've hit number one on iTunes six times, so we get different like people that find it. But that's so you you how far did you drive? Nine hours. That's impressive. That's impressive. What are you doing now? Uh, right now, it's just a little part time job. What I've been using to pay for college. Where do you go to college? The local junior college. I'm super impressed. You did well. Okay, and you're a graphic design guy. I'm. The program at the school was a video game and computer simulation type yeah. program. So I program, I can Got it. write, I can design stuff. Um, to answer your question, what we do is we have a thing called a shadow process. And it, is it Carol? Is that right? Barbara. Why would I say Carol? I don't know. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Okay, so Barbara. Um, so what we do is we'd have you guys shadow. So if, if it was like we, we, read it, we go through all the resumes and I want to meet you because I go through them and I kind of want to like put a face with the resume and figure all that. Um, and then we'll call you guys tomorrow by, by 9 if it's just something I want to move forward. I just like to get your aura. Um, and then we have a lot of people. And I'm, I'm the one who always meets everybody. But then we'd have a shadow where you actually we're going to shadow like for an hour or two. I, I tell people just plan on like from 9 to 12, but you don't have to be the whole time necessarily. And I just want you to meet everybody who would work here to see if you'd get along and that kind of thing. You know, and then um, Barbara, what what questions do you have? How did you hear about this place? Oh, my mother-in-law. Cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Well, what are you? uh, What questions do you have? I just was interested to hear the jobs, and then she told me there might be some. Yeah. Well, I have a. I have. um, I will. Basically, the search engine optimization role, the marketing assistant, that role is open today, tonight. It's very dynamic, though, because there's always growing, so there's a lot of people coming in. It's like Google, they're always hiring. Um, but then you have um, the sales thing. I, th- I don't think we have a position open for that tonight, right? Relevant? Yeah. No. But we do sometimes. It, yeah, it changes. Okay. But, um, but we do have, I think, three spots we're looking for currently tonight. So, and I'll, But any, any other questions you have about uh, what we do up here? Yes, I do. Um, my attorney represents T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and Craig Rochelle, and somehow he got stuck with me. 
And we handle all the marketing for them too. And they are looking for somebody who's really, really sharp to fill a long-term position. It's benefits. It's, um, but they want people who've been on the planet a longer period of time. Because if you were born yesterday, one might think that, oh, this person has the best of intentions. And if you're working for a law firm, there's always kind of squirreliness. So they want people that are um, mature and kind of dress sharp. That's just what they're looking for. People are detailed. And, and yes, and so that, that position just came open yesterday. So I know about that. I can be able to talk to you more about that. Um, any questions you have? What skills do you need to be on a deal, kid? Skills? Um, just be crazy coachable, like off the charts coachable. And then try to go like years without yawning. Because it's like a, it's a, it goes fast in here. And so we're meeting here after everyone's gone home. But Monday through Thursday, it's from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's like a sprint. And it's just, if you like energy, you have to go, you'd like it. But if you're like, I don't like this, <laughs> you know? Times. Yeah. Now, what, what is your name? My name is Terry. Terry. And what questions do you have, Miss Terry? Well, I want, first of all, I came here to make sure it wasn't just a sales position. Because, like, I have two degrees. Okay. AAS and graphic communications and MBA and graphic design. Okay. okay. And the reason why I feel like it's su- sufficient to bring it up is because I've been looking for something like in the advertising world. Yeah. You know, yeah. now I have, I live in Fort Gibson because me and my husband we own a ranch. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. And so I do all the ranching and stuff I got with him, and plus I do industrial design and stuff like that. But, uh, I've had a lot of ad agencies looking at me, but I didn't want to relocate. Got it. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't want to move. No. You want to stay where there's the farm, the ranch, the husband, the whole thing? Yes. Okay. Right. Cool. And, like, he's a literary artist. We're all into art. My daughter's an artist. She's in the Air Force on top of it. She also did, like, her squadrons, like, yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Um, but I saw this on Envy. Okay. And I was like, this is probably an opportunity for me, but I wasn't sure because yeah. all the positions that I've applied for for a graphic design position... You know, I mean, I want to grow, first of all. Well, there's, there's different kinds of, and I'll just tell you this, and I'm not trying to be negative. I just no, want to no, make sure no, that no, my buddy owns a firm called Hampton mm-hmm. that might suit what you want to do because it's very artistic, like very creative, and they do really cool stuff. And I, and I don't view them as a competitor, but they are like, like he wears like a flower in his shirt. <laughs> You know, and he's very like, I don't know, it's fabulous. And, but they have huge accounts and they're, and that's what he does. And I'm all about like helping people get unpoor real fast. Like I'm all about like, that's cool. We could spend seven weeks talking about the logo, but instead I'm going to just get you to the top of Google and make a bunch of money right now. And by the way, when you shoot your YouTube video today and make a performa and fire that guy and do this. And then they're like, I'm more of like, you ever seen that show The Prophet? Yes. I'm like, kind of like that it's like you know no soup for you it's like a high energy fast pace it's like people are like are you like a what is your deal i'm like a bowling ball like just go you know just go and then but the graphic design typically more like the high design i would say hampton and cubic are probably the best in town for that i'm probably more like low design but fast design and then make money for clients if that makes sense you know what I mean? I count winning as like the client making more money than they're paying me as soon as possible. That's how I do it. Um, skills, but just super coachable. Um, being able to, Ben can talk to you more about that, but Ben, you were at Lowe's. Oh, yeah. I mean, were you yeah. typing like a boss at Lowe's? Um, I was not. I was uh, moving lumber, actually. So, mm-hmm. And I have no discernible skills. I mean, I took algebra three times, mm-hmm. you know, ACT three times. My wife rejected me multiple times when I proposed. Crazy. It's crazy how she said yes. Blindness. She's got blindness. She can't see. But all I'm saying is like that's a – you don't need a whole lot of skills. You need to have that grind, if that makes sense. And your name is Alex. Alex. Alex, Alex where are you from, dude? Tulsa. Tulsa. Okay, cool. Where, do you, where have you been doing previous to now? Uh, I was going to TCC. Yep. I feel like that really wasn't for me. Okay. Yeah. So you tried it out and you're kind of like, hmm. Okay, okay. Um, any questions you have, sir? And what's your name again? John. John, okay. John, any questions you have, John? So there's a graphic design yep. position open? True. Marketing? Yep. Graphic design and the marketing assistant, marketing assistant would be SEO, search engine, and um, those would be the two spots tonight. Oh, okay, the three. Okay, so those are the two. Yeah, two that are open for search engine tonight. 
Shaw Holmes is looking to hire somebody. Uh, Steve Currington is looking to hire somebody. I believe uh, Nathan's hiring somebody for the carpet side. Do you need one technician tonight? Uh, one or two. One or two? Yeah. And what does that pay approximately? Yeah, so I'm kind of a matchmaker. I try to find the right fit for the right people. So there's a couple of different spots there. Um, and ma'am, your name? Lily. Lily. Okay, Lily. And Lily, what questions do you have? You're good? Okay, I respect that. And your, your name again, sir? Austin. Austin. What questions do you have? Um, I was just wanting to know more about the graphic design position. Okay, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up Daisy here real quick. And Amelia, I'm going to let you get back to me and Austin over there. Hey, I was here for Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. Woo! Um, how long have you been here? Two years. Okay, what were you doing before you were here? So before I was here, I did a. I was in education, mm -hmm. uh, which is surprisingly soul sucking. <laughs> oh. Well, no, I love the kids. Oh. The politics and the bureaucracy of it all. I just got. Yeah, I became kind of cynical with it. Uh, before that, I managed a donut shop, mm. uh, two locations. I've done banking. I've done a myriad of different things, but none of them as great as yours. And you are not white. Last time I checked. Okay. <laughs> and you're Buddhist. Yes. How does that impact our daily interaction? It doesn't. Like, I mean... It, we, you know that I'm a Christian. I'm right. always trying to convert you. Yeah, yeah. And you know that Ben's a Mormon and he's always trying to convert me. He never mentions it, but I know what he's doing. <laughs> I know what he's doing. No, he is. Is he, he, this, is the, this is the thing about Ben. Let me tell you about Ben. He's sneaky, sneaky. He's like, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to live it. And then if you want it, ask me about it. See, that's what he does. He just like sets this... He doesn't talk about he it. He sets the tone. I mean it. Very sneaky. His wife's the same sneaky. They're both like... This guy the other day, we had barbecue. We're serving barbecue for a person who's like a celebrating somebody. And uh, we're like, Ben, do you want barbecue? Tempting him. Right. He's like, no, I'll wait for Amelia. Doesn't know where she is. <laughs> Says it's sneaky, though. And it, most people were like, this dude's not going to have barbecue while he's waiting for... He has no idea where she is in the building. He's a good guy. So all I'm saying is... But we have different faiths in here. It doesn't have to be like you're pro... But we capitalism is probably the religion that we all have, you know. Um, so uh, what question do you have for Daisy? Because she started off on the phones, and now she manages the call center. And uh, she's a great lady and has a great kid named Atticus who says that I'm old. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, you're old. <laughs> yes. You're going to get paid to do. Like, you're going to be, like, doing it, like, day one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Past the first initial two-week training, like, what do you have? What is do you there mean? the ability to then get further training on, like, as you go? Yeah. Right. What you do is you're going to work in a 90-day tour of duties, I would call it. I'm just asking you mentally to commit to work here for 90 days. Because I, I shouldn't do it, and my wife's kind of helping me through this. But, like, I don't know. You know my mother-in-law, but she really cares about facials. <laughs> and I'm like... Can we let it go? No, no, no. Because she, she like wants to deliver a great experience. She's into that, you know. And like I can't explain to you why, but she is. That's just her love language. She's into it. And I think clients of hers experience that, you know. And for me, I kind of view every employee as kind of like the personification of my dad. Where I'm like, I don't know why my dad was so poor at the age of 38. I don't understand that. But I think it's because he wasn't taught certain skills. Because he had a degree. He was the top of his class. I mean, he literally was the very top of his class at ORU. And I'm like, I have to believe that if somebody would have pointed out to him, Tom, don't do this and do this. I, have, I believe he would have done it. He always worked hard. Mm -hmm. But because he worked at Quick Trip and the Night Shift and he worked at Domino's, I stuttered as a kid and I got made fun of. I couldn't talk till I was 13 years old. And I got made fun of all the freaking time and my parents couldn't afford a speech pathologist. And I have to believe they would have hired one if they could have. And so I just kind of like, I want to teach you the skills needed to pay the bill. I'm just all about like, do this, boom. And then if you want to be here for five years or six years and become a partner in one of the businesses, like a law firm, great. If you want to be on the podcast with me every day and that's your goal, great. If you want to become a real estate agent, great. If you want to become a super mom, great. I don't care. Super dad, great. I just am saying I want to help you get where you want to go. And I view it as like a tour of duty, not like a wage cage. So upward mobility is my game, you know. So every 90 days we kind of reevaluate. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So I started off in the call center um, as a call center rep. And I, I came in through the group interview. And I was like, 
I literally don't care what I have to do. Like I need to be, I need to be here. So what, what do you have? Right. And uh, at the time, Vanessa was like, well, we need somebody in our call center. And I was like, okay. So, you know, I, I really want to work for Thrive, but if it means being here in this environment, I will do whatever I need to do. And so I started off in the call center and within the first 90 days, they're like, we want to promote you to call center manager. I was like, okay, cool. And I've been doing that ever since. And she was the worst manager of all time, in my opinion, and the best salesperson at the same time. Because when she's good, like she's good at her job, Mm -hmm. but then managing people, that's like where you're going like, hey, 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 quit vaping. (laughs) So constructive criticism is awesome. Yeah, and she like absorbed it though, you know what I mean? And so I'd be like, hey, don't argue with her, just tell her what to do. Because we had one coworker who used to like go out there and do the hula hoop, remember her? In the middle of the day, she would just go out there and she'd be like, whoa, just hula hooping. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? And then she would like get into a debate with them as a po- you know. And then now she's great at it though. And then she messed up and said she wanted to become a speaker lady. Yeah. And so now she speaks at the conferences. And we have a conference in here every two months for our clients. About 120 people are here every time. But uh, any other questions for Daisy about being here? No? Um, when you first got here, yeah, like, okay, when, I, when I first came in, I was like, oh, this is so great. You know, because the way it's set up mm. and everything like that, I'm like, that's where the workstations. This is that look. This area right here was like a photo shoot. You know, like the backdrop of a photo shoot and everything like that. Yeah. And then I was going over there and I was like, oh, okay, this is where some of the graphic design comes in. You know. And every was, picture on every <laughs> wall like, has, has been <laughs> put there specifically, and then all the writing is my handwriting. So I'm always. My dad died. There he is. Rip. Tom Clark. Bomb. Tom bomb. It's Tom bomb. So I put that there. Because I felt like I needed to have it. I see it all the time when I'm speaking. So I'm at conferences. Mm-hmm. I'm always thinking of my dad. Mm-hmm. You know. So and then like victory, I think that's a big word. It's important. But anyway, so we it's just a different place. It's a fun place. But I would like for you to meet the teammates before you kind of decide the A or B. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to do is I had questions for Justice and Jaw, and for Barbara. I had some questions for you guys based upon your resume. And I would like for Amelia to give a tour of you so you can see everything. Okay, so if you guys here, you three, can go with Amelia, that'd be great. And then if you three can go with a Daisy and Ben on a little tour, let's give them a tour. That cool. And then I have some questions for you guys. Um, and then do you have your printed resumes tonight? Okay, so I have a few questions. And then those of you who are interested in the graphic design, have you all emailed in your portfolios? Yes. Okay, those are all been emailed? Yeah. You- Okay, so before you go today, I would like. Yeah, so before anybody, because graphic design comes down to me, I have to like obsess and look at your portfolios. Because mm-hmm. we've got so many talented people applying, and I like to personally look at that. So before you leave, if you have access to a mobile device or something, mm-hmm. if you could please, I want you to verify they do it, send it to founder at thrive15.com. Okay. And that is how we do it. And now, without any further ado, three, two, one, boom! You have questions? America's number one business coach has answers. It's your Broda from Minnesota. Here's another edition of Ask Clay Anything on the Thrive Time Business Coach Radio Show. Another exciting edition of Ask Us Anything. And on today's show, we are talking about the difference between merit based pay employees and uh, flat employee, uh, fat, uh, flat pay employees, uh, salaried employees. Again, easy for me to say uh, merit based pay employees versus salaried employees or employees who can't make any more money no matter how hard they work. So let's, before we get into the data and the research, before we get too deep into the weeds here, Marshall, why does a job for you not appeal at all if it is a flat salary? Uh, it doesn't appeal because my ceiling is capped. I know that I'm going to make so much, and no matter whether I perform well or don't perform well, I'm not going to be able to make more money. And so I love to be able to go uh, eat what I kill. I love to be able to know that because I am busier, because I am performing more effectively, because I'm producing more results, I'm going to get paid more. And that's why I love the merit-based pay versus the flat salary. All right, Clay Stairs, uh, you are a former, former school teacher. Um, what, talk to me about the kinds of behavior that you would see 
from your fellow colleagues who are all on a flat salary. No, seriously, because a lot of people have never been a school teacher or have never worked for the government. But what kind of uh, d- uh, work ethic or lack thereof would you see from your colleagues who all made a flat uh, salaried wage in the public in the, in the public school system? Oh, let's see. I'm really tired today. I think we'll watch videos in the classroom today. I think that'll be a good thing. You know, I think I'll wear my sweats today. I think that's a good move for me. I get 10 sick days a year. I'm taking every dad gum one of them. Uh, I get another six personal days. I'm going to take those as well every single year. I had a, a friend of mine that was a very, uh, uh, he was a teacher who taught in the, in the public school system for over 30 years. And he got this thing called tenure. I'm not sure how many years you have to work before you earn the tenure. Is it three? Three. And so basically, unless he uh, sexually or physically assaulted a kid, he's good to go. Yeah. And they had this thing called personal days. I'm not sure if you're familiar yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. But it's where you could call in and your employer was not allowed to ask why. I, yes. I remember this. And he would I, just I, call at that in. Point, at that point, Clay, I loved it. Because I was a C player at the, in those days. So let me just tee up what he would do. He DJed for us on the weekends, on a Saturday usually. So what happened is, if he, he would tell me, he's like, dude, here's the deal. Because we, we were merit-based pay, and the job he had during the day was not merit-based pay. Yeah. Because I was merit-based pay, he would tell me, just so you know, I am not going to be at work off Saturday or Sunday. I'm just telling you in advance I'll be out of town. I'm like, okay. But as, as, as I got to know this person, he started telling me, I'm calling in my workplace, and I've put you as like a backup employer or my second employer or whatever, and I took a, a paid personal or whatever this personal day. So I'm going to call in last minute on Thursday and Friday. I'm going to call in last minute on Thursday and Friday. I'm telling you in advance, though, I'm going to be gone Saturday and Sunday. I also have a call in last minute on Monday so I can string together a long weekend because I'm going to Florida. And I'm like, so you're going to go to Florida on Wednesday, knowing for sure you won't be at work on Thursday, but you're going to call them Thursday morning with a personal issue. He goes, oh, exactly. It's and the system. He said, all, all the teachers do it, man. Yeah. And I'm going, are you serious? Have you seen, have you seen that scenario unfold, Clay Stairs? Oh, completely. Right. I have. Unfortunately, again, unfortunately, yes. I say, And again, it's not just teachers. I mean, it's just in that salaried world of whether I'm awesome or whether I suck, I, it doesn't matter. I, I'm going to get paid the same, so I might as well just be marginal. So, again, as we're talking today about flat salaries or, or just, you know, is salaries where you're capped versus a uh, merit-based pay system, uh, the level of performance of the average employee is, is just dramatic, Marshall. I mean, people who are, are chasing a carrot, they are just sincerely and uh, much more motivated than the average person who, no matter how hard they work, they make the same amount of money. And there's a book called The Service Profit Chain, that's written about this concept. And the, the, the service profit chain essentially establishes relationships between profitability, customer loyal, loyalty, employee satisfaction, loyalty, and productivity. But Marshall, um, you've read the book. You've broken down the service profit oh, yeah. chain. Why does merit-based pay dramatically impact the performance of the average employee? Okay, so merit-based pay is so crucial because at the service profit chain core, that's what drives it. So they find, okay, we understand that we need to increase customer loyalty. Well, what drives customer loyalty? What they found in the Harvard Business Review is that customer satisfaction, that's what drives it. So they're like, okay, how do we drive customer satisfaction? Well, what they found is employee satisfaction. And at the core of employee satisfaction are things like merit-based pay. They know I can make more if I produce more and my employer is going to engage with me. They're going to train me. They're going to help me become better and therefore help Help me make more money. That's really cool. And so that's why merit-based pay in the Harvard Business Review, this is one of my favorite topics. If it's okay, I would like to just tee up some ample examples, and we'll go to Quick Trip first, the Bingo. convenience store industry, the gas stations. For those of you listening in different parts of the country where you cannot find a Quick Trip convenience store, there are billions and billions of dollars generated every year by Quick Trip. They are a very successful company. Just Google search Quick Trip convenience stores to learn more. Marshall, contrast your experience as a customer going into a Shell gas station versus a Quick Trip gas station. Going into a Quick Trip merit-based pay culture versus a Shell flat rate 
salary-based culture. Talk to me about the difference between merit-based pay, quick trip, versus eh, salary, let's pay as little as possible, Shell. I have a confession to make, and it was one of the low no. moments of my life. But no. last week, I was like, I'm looking around for a quick trip to pull over, maybe use the restroom, get some gas, get something to like, get you know something to drink on the way on the way to the show or something. So I just pulled over in a local gas station. And I'm like, hey, it can't possibly be bad. <laughs> I and I, be. I assure you, there's like open standing water back there. There's like a gas yeah. tanks. I'm like. Oh my gosh! I they they they're giving me a key to the restroom with like a a car carburetor attached to it or something like that. It is wild. But you walk into Quick Trip, it's always clean. Everything's always stocked. There's checklists on the door showing the last time it was cleaned and who it was cleaned by. As a customer, I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. I would go out of my way yeah, in order to go definitely. to Quick Trip. Yeah. Okay, uh, Clay Stairs, you travel a lot. Uh, you're a paid speaker. You travel now. All around the world, uh, people in San Diego love you. People in New York love you. People in Florida love you. You speak all around the world at different events, and uh, you and Lisa, ha your your wife, incredible wife, have a great time to uh, a great opportunity to, to travel together yes, love and it. Uh, to speak. It's it's a neat. Uh, uh, I I just in the future as you're adding more and more speaking events, it's it's exciting to see you guys do that. But you, I'm sure, have, have flown on many different airlines. Yes. Could you please contrast Southwest Air Southwest Airlines? And their merit-based pay culture versus that of pretty much ev everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's night and day. And, and uh, you know, there's been several times where flying out of Tulsa sometimes can be tough. You know, with your choices. Right. But man, if I can get on Southwest, it's the only way to go. The friendliness, the ease in in uh, in getting onto the plane is so, is so much easier. Clay was actually literally on a plane one time. And uh, it was on not Southwest. And I just asked the stewardess, you know, or the flight attendant, pardon me. And, uh, you know, could is could I have some snacks, some peanuts or something like that? She literally looked at me with angst in her eyes and said, this isn't Southwest. She literally said that. OK, now I, I want to be you, Mar Marshall. I want to be united okay. Ooh, there in this we go. idea. Okay. I want to be united in this Airlines. idea because as great Americans, we're not here to name specific uh, you know, American airlines that suck. Mm. We need to be united in this idea. That's right. Yes. We don't want to name specific American airlines that suck. We don't want right. to do that. We're not the kind of people that would name specific Right? Are we united in this That's idea? Right. We're, we're not going to name specific American airlines that suck. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, but talk to me Marshall. Your your experience. You're a tall guy. You're a tall man. How tall are you? I'm six foot seven. You have flown on many different airlines. Yes. Talk to me about the courtesy or lack thereof of Southwest Airlines versus other airlines when it comes to just accommodating you and other people. Uh, I would say on other airlines, it has been disastrous when the flight is empty. I kid you not. There's an economy class and then there's economy plus with a little extra leg room. Ooh. And when the flight is empty, I might like to, you know, go up a little extra couple rows and sit in the economy plus because there's five people on the plane <laughs> and i'm promptly asked uh sir you didn't pay for an economy plus can you please uh move back to the economy seating um there's literally nobody else on the plane you know a little fun factoid wow. for you this is a little fun factoid for some of the listeners out there a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of our listeners like to tune in for the fun, fun factoids yeah oh marshall i think i might have hit the wrong button i'll just kind of make a sound effect okay sound. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Marshall, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Delta is actually the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. That's right. Completely unrelated to this conversation. That's correct. Because we are united yes. in our decision As to Americans. not speak specifically antagonistically about any other American airline. That's correct. Have you ever flown on another airline outside of Southwest Airlines that was a positive experience? Because if you have, we want to keep it fair and balanced. I mean, there's people have said good things about Virgin. Mm -hmm. People have said good things about JetBlue, which was started by a former Southwest employee. That's right. Uh, have you ever, have you guys, have you ever, ever, ever had Marshall an experience that was positive with another airline outside of Southwest Airlines? No. Clay Stairs, we want to be united in our non-attack of American Airlines. Fun factoid: the fourth letter of the alphabet here in the Greek language is Delta. Just a fun factoid: have you ever had a positive experience with another airline that's not Southwest Airlines? No. I have not. Six hours. Six hours on the tarmac. Starbucks. Okay. Starbucks. Merit-based pay. 
Mm-hmm. So what happens is I actually met a lady who's the regional manager for, for the Starbucks stores in this area sure. a few years back. And she was sharing with me at the end of the month, she makes a percentage of the store's profitability. Okay. She personally gets to keep a percentage of the store's profitability. Sounds to me a lot like a lot like merit-based pay. The better they perform, the more she makes. Bingo. So have you ever been into a Starbucks, Marshall? Yes. Clay Stairs, have you ever been into a not uh, to a non Starbucks? Yes, I definitely have. Have you noticed the difference between a local donut slash coffee shop with the white ambiguous styro- styrofoam cups versus a Starbucks, Marshall? Yeah, it's it's vastly different in that I could go to a Starbucks on in the Northeast or down south or here in Tulsa, and I know that I'm going to get the exact same experience across the board. It seems to me in these first few examples that merit-based pay versus salaried pay, there might be something to this whole idea that you pay people based upon what they do versus what they say they're going to do. Do you guys agree at this point? Are we? I agree. Yes, I'm over with you. Okay, so Disney World. Versus the average amusement park. Have you ever been, Clay Stairs, to a Bells amusement yes. park in yes. Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yes, Do you I remember have. Bells? I remember Bells. Marshall, do you remember Bells? Phantasmagoria. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Do you guys <laughs> Himalaya. remember you could actually bring a Pepsi can? No. Oh. And you could get in for like $5? Yeah, yes. That's right. Your, your admission to Bells Amusement Park in Tulsa, Oklahoma was only $5 if you brought in a Pepsi can. That's right. And do you remember how that was too much? Yeah, you're like, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't think so. I'm over paying here. I mean, it was like you're going into, um, it was like you went into like an air, like an, like an airport store. You know, the airport store has a store called like News or yeah. something News, CBS News, right. CNBC News, something like. And that. And you're looking for like a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> From the CNBC airport store. Mm-hmm. It's weird. And you're looking for a tuna fish sandwich, and you're thinking, well, you know, in a typical, uh, you know, the American economy, 2018, I'd probably spend $6, $5 on that. Yeah. At the airport, it's like 26 17 Yes. Yeah. It's like $26.17. Or uh, are you going to the airport, and you're looking for a yogurt, like a yogurt parfait? Oh, the parfait. Yogurt parfait is typically, what, guys, $2 at it, 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 uh Whole Foods, three dollars at Whole Foods. Sprouts, maybe three dollars. Whatever. Yep. You go in the airport, Marshall. How much could you expect to pay for a yogurt parfait at a typical airport? It'd be like seventeen fifty. Do you remember how that felt when you went into Bell's? You brought in a Pepsi can. You did your duty to help recycle. You go in there, and it was normally it was like thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, you know, did you bring a Pepsi can? You said, yeah. They said, well, it's five dollars. Do you remember the feeling of like this is probably too much? You're like that. I could use this five dollars for so many other things. I'm being things. gouged here. Yes. And do you remember how, like, no matter uh, how your shoes were going into Bell's, you would always leave with gum. They were different going on your out. shoes yes. going out. Shoes were different. What about Bell's amusement park was terrible? Their culture of salaries, of paying people as little as possible, and then let's contrast that to Disney World. Okay, so let's go with. Disney World versus Bells. So, Clay Stairs, you're on the team Bells. Ooh. Tell us what was terrible about Bells. And then Marshall won up him with team Disney. So, okay. let's go with you, Clay Stairs, first. Well, just uh, just the cleanliness at Bells. Like you were saying, you, your shoes change you, while you're there. They're like offering tetanus shots uh, when yeah, you get out of the bathroom. Something. And another one, well, I'll, I'll take that one. Then Marshall will go to you with uh, with Disney World. Uh, uh, so Then back to me. When, when we were interviewing the former executive vice president of Walt Disney World Resort. A partner, Co- a friend, a frequent guest on the Thrive Time show, Lee Cockrell. We're, we're there in Walt Disney World. Yep. And, and we watched different cast members, not team members, but cast members. They call them cast members. Walk around the park and pick up trash. And we never saw trash down on the ground for longer than, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. We, True because story. Because somebody's coming by and picking it up because that was how important that was. They, they assign wow. a specific uh, area and they walk up and down all day picking up trash and greeting guests. That's what impressive. Disney World does. It was impressive. It bells. Wow. People almost walk around like avoiding the trash. Yeah. They're like, yeah. trying, oh, there's trash. Try not to oh, see yeah. it. Try not to see I'm it. I'm on trying salary. I make yeah. a flat rate here. I can't yeah. get promoted. No matter how hard I work, I can't make any more. I'm yeah. out. Yeah, bells, bells had that culture of carnies, too. They were always just a little Could sketch. you, for the listeners out there, we have a lot of listeners who are in Florida. Small hands. California. <laughs> uh, Canada. <laughs> Australia. We have a lot of high class listeners that cannot relate to the term carny. Yo. Could you please explain what a carny is, Mr. Clayster? Carny, they're carnival people. 
they're they're vagabonds they are travelers they are bohemians they are they're moving with the trucks and they usually talk they kind of have their own like thing where it's like a well i tell you what you 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 want to play here today to win a chance to win that big old stuffed animal uh, i i respect that because you know you want to step right up or are you a weenie yeah and you're like did he, does a man just uh-huh. call me a weenie you're like you just ask somebody how much does it cost to play this game well, I'll tell you what, you know, you you a weenie or are you going to play the game there? And they do a lot of like, well, I'll tell you what, by God. And they do a lot of just, it's like a lot of, it's like a, they're into noodling. Yes. Ooh, One of the redneck games. There That's right. They're just, they're, it's an interesting breed of people. That's The correct. carnies. Uh-huh. Marshall, contrast the carny culture of Bells versus that of, by the way, the bankrupt Bells, Bells now out of business. Yes. Versus that of the consistently profitable Walt Disney World Resorts, Marshall. Talk to me. Carnies versus what? What kind of people can you find at Walt Disney World Resorts? Well, first of all, they, we're talking about cast members, so they're not they're not employees, they're not team members, they're cast members, and that's exactly how they acted. They're actually always on uh, the showtime. They call it showtime there at Disney well, World. Well, I put on my pants this morning and it became showtime right away. I'll tell you. <laughs> and so you'll see all of these cast members in their character. They're they're acting as Cinderella. They're acting as uh, what? Goofy. Goofy is a, a, another one. Well, they're, today they're I'm, acti- I'm dressing up like I'm Mario Andrushi, Marshall. I didn't brush my teeth, but do we know if Mario Andrushi brushes his teeth? No, we don't. <laughs> and so you'll see that regardless of what's going on in whatever the cast member's life, how they they feel they're acting the entire time that they're out in front of uh, their guests because this is supposed to be the happiest place in the world and hey, you can't Marshall, have real that quick here it bells or you know a lot of people are getting that fancy bluetooth technology it barrels we're offering brown tooth technology Marshall, you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> No, is it? You can't have that. <laughs> no, no, that's not a thing. No, but that, that's not a move. I want to make sure you it's get not this. A move. That Bell's. Uh, uh, those of you who have not been to Bell's, it was unbelievable how low the quality standard was. <laughs> and for years, Tulsa was forced to go to Bell's as its only entertainment option. Now we go to Chick Fil A. Yes, Clay Stairs. Have you ever been to a Chick Fil A? Yesterday, Marshall. Have you ever been to a Popeyes? Oh yeah! <laughs> have you Didn't been to a, Have you yeah, been to a Chick Fil A cluster? I have been to a. Chick-fil-A. Have you been to a Popeyes, Marshall? <laughs> yes, I have. So please contrast now, Clusters. You get to be the good guy now. Oh yeah! Talk to me about the merit-based pay culture of Chick Fil A, where they pay people based upon results and not based upon intentions, versus that of Popeyes. No offense to Popeyes. We're just talking about facts. When I say, with all due respect. And no offense, henceforth I can say whatever I henceforth I can say whatever I want. So, Clay Stairs, Chick-fil-A, why do people line up and form a line around the building for Chick-fil-A? Well, number one, I'll go first here, Marshall. Number one, my pleasure. Mm, my so pleasure. Just the the courtesy and the kindness of the people behind the counters. And they're they're like 16, 17, 18 years old. Nice people. Nice That's right. people. And look nice. I feel like I'm going to like a Mormon missions trip. Thank when you I go very much. To Chick-fil-A. Yes. Nice people, filled with homeschoolers. Now we go here to, <laughs> now we go here to Popeyes. Or Mar- Marshall, have you been to Popeyes? Yeah. Do, objectively, I, do you like the chicken? Uh, I don't. I don't like it more than Chick Fil A. <laughs> have you been into but a Popeyes? I'm. D- uh, y- yeah, I've been into a Popeyes. What What's the difference between the people at a Chick Fil A versus the people of? Popeyes. Well, you'll just stand at that counter with the register, and you can almost like see the eyes from back behind the the grill, and they're like looking. Does he see us? <laughs> they're like <laughs> shocked. Like, oh, we, we have a customer coming, coming in today. today. What do we do? I wasn't prepared. For this. I wasn't prepared for what is going on. But that's how it feels like it, with Chick Fil A. When you walk in, they're greeting you and acknowledging yes. your presence immediately. Um, but at Popeyes, they're like, "I'm here." You almost want to yell, <laughs> shout ding, through ding, the ding. store. Yeah. Uh, guys, yeah. I'm here. I mean, it's, seriously, when you walk into Popeye's, you want to freak a Popeye's employee out, just go there. <laughs> They've never <laughs> seen up. a customer. Show up. It's amazing how it still exists. Seriously. That's right. Okay. Now, Chick-fil-A, another good attribute, Clay Stairs, of Chick-fil-A. Think about Chick-fil-A. What makes Chick-fil-A so spectacular in your mind? Okay, I'm doing two here. Clean. All right. Clean and the music. Mm. I'm going there. Mm. Clean in the music. Marshall, 
Uh, contrast that to Popeyes. Uh, the fluorescent light bulbs that are out, nice. in, or, or, or worse than that, they're not out, but they're just kind of flickering. Yo. So you feel like you're, <laughs> you feel like you're in an industrial park inside the Popeyes, and you're like, oh juicy. gosh, yeah. and the, it, and it's eerily quiet. Ooh, yeah, late True. at night, and so you're like. Yeah. Can I just get my chicken? Get out of here! Or they got the TV going. They got the TV TV going. going. You know, so you got some kind of rando, you know, drama going on. Now again, Chick Fil A really does accommodate. As a parent, they accommodate the kids. They always have balloons for the kids, slides for the kids, a nice environment for the kids. My kids want to go there. My kids, you know, kids when they're like twelve, when they're thirteen, they start to develop a filter. But nine, eight, seven, six, five, my kids will just say no filter. They'll say, Dad, we don't want to go to Popeyes. It's terrible. Now, as an adult, you go, this podcast host is mean. Mm. He's slanderous. This mm. is a mean person. He's mentioning a company by name and talking about how terrible it is. Yes, because everybody out there knows it. You just don't want to say it. Marshall, talk to me about how Popeyes, you know, accommodates kids. Talk to me about the slides, the balloons for the kids. Talk to me about the Popeyes aura they bring to the table on a daily basis okay i'm not a parent clay stairs you help me out with this i've but, never but, been to popeyes but, but you help me out with this okay i'm with you you're going to popeyes you're bringing your kids when your kids are little yes okay kids don't touch anything dwarf kids little kids yeah. if they're headed towards the playground <laughs> the thought crosses your mind yes. what did the other kids touch before they touched exactly. it? Exactly. True. Do we need to wipe yeah. this town? Yeah. But but at, at Chick Fil A, it's always clean. Right. It, it, everything. It's oh. spotless. Yeah. I, I if you're out there today and you're going, I don't really see the difference between merit based pay and flat pay. Salary pay. Marshall, could you read the notable quotable from Jack Welch here? Jack Welch, the CEO, who famously grew GE by four thousand percent during his tenure uh yes so jack welch he says if you pick the right people and give them the opportunity to spread their wings and put compensation as a carrier behind it you almost don't have to manage them and clay i want to uh one up you with a with another quote from my main man steve jobs in my face okay so this is what steve jobs talks about a players okay he said i noticed that the dynamic range between what an average person could accomplish and what the best person could accomplish was 50 or 100 to one given that you're well advised to go after the cream of the cream a small team of A-plus players can run circles around a giant team of B and C players. What does this mean? This means if you're going to hire people, hire the A-plus players. And what are A-plus players looking for? They are looking for merit-based pay. Set it up. If you're out there today and you're fighting this idea, I want to I want to just give you an example we can all relate to. Everybody, everybody knows about this. Marshall, are you aware? Uh, do you watch a lot of NFL? Yeah. Uh, wh- who's your favorite team? The Cleveland Browns, baby. <laughs> okay, uh, Mayfield. No, and 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 I will tell you that the the the, the Cleveland Browns, objectively, they these guys are really uh, turning their organization around. But I w- I want to make sure that we get an example of merit based pay. The NFL stands for not for long if you don't produce. <laughs> That's right. Uh, wh- why? What? What? Why, Marshall? Why does it stand for not for long if you don't produce? Because they're in the business to win games and uh, sell tickets. Okay, so think about this: the average career of the NFL player is what? Marshall, if you had to guess, the average you know career length of an NFL player is what? Uh, I would say maybe six years, eight years, three, four. Really? I'm going three or four. Three point three. Boom. Really? Yeah. Thank three point three. Now I want to I want to tell you an example of uh, from my favorite team, the New England Patriots, and okay. I just want to give you an example about uh, why the Patriots can win year after year. Um, they create uh, a team where the vast majority of the income for players can be made via incentives. So as an example, uh, Rob Gronkowski, who is a uh, uh, you know, all-pro, um, future Hall of Fame uh, uh, tight end for the, New England, for the New England Patriots, he has a, a contract that's very nice, but the guy can earn up to $4 million a year of additional income based upon incentives and those are like making the pro bowl playing it's per game he plays so he has an incentive to play hurt he has an incentive to play at his best it's based upon getting to the playoffs 
number of catches. There's a lot of incentives, and we'll put a link to Rob Gronkowski's 2018 Patriots incentives. But at the NFL level, and I, I, I'm just ripping on myself right now, I definitely do not have the talent and or skill or the will to play in the NFL. I couldn't do it, even if I wanted to. But if let's just say that we were all six foot eight and we were very athletic, Marshall, would you want to play in the NFL if you couldn't earn millions of dollars per year? No, I probably wouldn't. Clay Stairs, I mean, if you were offered an opportunity to play in the NFL, knowing that there's concussions, injuries, a lot of times life altering. Like I, I heard an interview the other day with uh, Jerome Bur- uh, Jerome Bettis. Yeah, uh, Jerome Bettis, the former uh, running back for the Hall of Fame running back for the Steelers. Mm-hmm. And they were asking him about what it's like getting up every day. You know, how, how are you dealing with retirement? And he right, goes, wow. every morning is, again, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, every morning is a living hell. Wow. He's like, I just have so much pain, arthritis. It's just, it takes me till about noon just to kind of get my mind right, you know, kind of get. And there's a lot of people in the NFL that, that have a similar um, if you look at if you look up uh, Marshall, put on the show notes Michael Strahan's hands. Clay Stairs, have you seen Michael Strahan's hands? I don't think I have. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up so you can see it on the screen here. Um, it, it'll blow your mind. This is Michael Strahan, and this is what an NFL career does to you. Look at his fingers. Oh my! Look at those fingers. Whoa, that's that's not right. But I'm just saying, like, how many people out there, Marshall, you included, would want to play? Any sport at all, if your fingers were going to be in continual arthritic pain wow. for the rest of your life, if you could not earn millions of dollars as a reward. I mean, nobody's going to do it. Would no. you do it, Clayster? I would do one play, but not two. Okay, so a lot of people, though, would say, I'm not going to play in the NFL, but if there wasn't that kind of merit based pain. Mm-hmm. Now, let's dial it down a little bit. How many listeners out there? Uh, Mr. Listener, Mrs. Listener listening out there today, I ask you this. Would you be willing to care about the profitability of a billion-dollar company like Starbucks if you did not earn a bonus based upon the profitability? I mean, Clay Stairs, if you were the district manager, regional manager for a Starbucks, would you care at all about the profitability if you couldn't make more by essentially living at Starbucks to make it more profitable? No. Marshall, Disney World. You're a manager of Disney World. Would you at all care about the profitability of Disney World if you could not make more money as a result of the success of the team? No, I wouldn't care. Okay. Chick-fil-A. Clay Stairs, if you owned a Chick-fil-A, no matter how bad or good it did, you made the same amount of money per year, would you care? No, would not. I can say this. If I ran a quick trip or Southwest Airlines, I wouldn't care. And maybe you're listening today and you say, well, you're bad people. I think, I'm, I think we're honest yeah. people. Well, Clay, that goes back to, again to me as a school teacher, flat pay. And, and the only way for me to make more money was to teach another year. And I got like a 2.5% increase. There's just no reason to want to do a great job. Yeah. I think if you're out there and you're honest with yourself, you're, you're, you're going to probably not be super motivated to do something unless you can make more money. That's why you started a company. That is why you started a company. You started a company because you wanted to make money based upon the value that you add to the hour and not get paid based upon the hours that you work. So why would you not share the wealth and create a merit-based pay program for your team? Marshall, what's the biggest struggle that clients have, that entrepreneurs have, that business owners have when it comes to implementing merit-based pay? Where do you get the pushback? Uh, I don't know how to implement it. I don't know what it should be. I, I, I don't know, like, metrics-wise what it should be. Clay Stairs, where do you get the most pushback on how to introduce and implement a merit-based pay program? Oh, yeah, most of the people that uh, when I bring up the topic with our clients, Clay, they, they just they don't have any idea what it is. And they, they think immediately they go to paying uh, employees more money. No, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. That's, that's the pushback that I've had. So if you're out there today and you are struggling with implementing merit-based pay or any other uh, best practice that we teach on the Thrive Time Show, I would encourage you today, book your tickets to our next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop. Because Marshall, when people have a specific question about how to implement merit-based pay for their specific company, home builders, doctors, dentists, lawyers, chiropractors, what do we do in between the breaks? 
Uh, well, we have a 45-minute sprint where we're teaching a principal, and then the 15-minute break, we're actually breaking out into small different groups and answering any questions that you have. And then we actually have boards that we'll have up there so that you can write down your yeah. questions, and we'll answer all of the questions that you have before you leave. Clay Stairs, if somebody has a question at the workshop, you've seen this, they're going, I just don't know how to implement the merit-based pay. I have a question. What do you see us do? Uh, do? Do we do we just disregard the question, or how do we handle it? Oh no, we address it right there. We address it right there. We do. And we answer it to to the satisfaction of the person that answered the question. We even stay during lunch. We stay after the workshop. Oh, yeah. We've met people before the workshop. That's why we capped yeah. the workshop at 150 people or so. So if you're out there today and you're going, gosh, I want to take my business or life to the next level, I would encourage you to book your tickets to our next in-person Thrive Time Show workshop today. It is irrefutably the world's highest and best it's the world's best and most reviewed workshop, the world's best and most reviewed business workshop. It's called the Thrive Time Show Workshop. You can book your tickets online today by going to thrivetimeshow.com. That's thrivetimeshow.com. And now without any further ado, three, three two, two, one, boom. boom. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so, so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in, in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the four hundred eleven percent shows that, that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was ninety one percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we, we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. So. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like you said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business um, and we, we were in a rut and we so, didn't know oh, sorry. the last three years our customer base had pretty much stayed the same we weren't shrinking but we weren't really growing either yeah and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go what to do uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in 
Uh, but Thrive helped us with that. You know, they, they implemented those systems that they taught us those systems. They taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed. Now it's been a grind. Absolutely, it's been a grind this last year. Um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into them. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we're at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a marked increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I wanna to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy's just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day to day. He does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up, and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like, he's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't... His highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, 
navigating competition and 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 an economy that's like i remember we got closed down for three months he helped us navigate on how to stay open how to how to get back open how to um, uh, just survive through all the covid shutdowns lockdowns because our clubs were all closed for i'm rachel with tip top canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to clay and vanessa clark Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See? It's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing, and this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now, it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you, times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. Hey, I'm Ryan Wimpy with Tip Top Canine, and I'm the founder. I'm Rachel Wimpy, and I am a co-founder. So we've been running Tip Top for about the last 14 years, franchising for the last three, four years. So someone that'd be a good fit for Tip Top, loves dogs, they're high energy, uh, they want to be able to own their own job, but they don't want to worry about, you know, that high failure rate. They want to do that like bowling with bumper lanes. So you give us a call, reach out to us, and we'll call you, um, and then we'll 
send you an FDD, look over that, read it, fall asleep to it, it's very boring. Um, and then we'll book a discovery day and you come and you can spend a day or two with us to make sure that you actually like it, make sure your training dogs is something that you want to do. So an FDD is a franchise disclosure document. It's a federally regulated document that goes into all the nitty gritty details of what the franchise agreement entails. So who would be a good fit to buy a Tip Top K9 would be somebody who loves dogs. Um, who wants to work with dogs all day as their profession. Um, you'll make a lot of money, you'll have a lot of fun, it's very rewarding. And who would not be a good fit is a cat person. So the upfront cost for Tip Top is $43,000. Uh, and a lot of people say they're generating doctor money, but on our disclosure, the numbers are anywhere from um, over a million dollars a year in dog training, what our Oklahoma City location did last year, to 25, 35 grand a month. Um, to train and get uh, trained by us for Tip Top Canine, to run your own Tip Top Canine, you would be um, with us for six weeks here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So we've been married for seven years. Eight years. Eight years. So if you're watching this video, you're like, hey, maybe I want to be a dog trainer. Hey, that one sounds super amazing. Go to our website, tiptopcanine.com. Click on the yellow franchising tab, fill out the form, and Rachel and I will give you a call. Our Oklahoma City location last year, they did over a million dollars. Uh, he's been running that shop for three years. Before, he was a youth pastor with zero sales experience, zero dog training experience before he ever uh, met with us. So just call us. Um, come spend a day with us. Spend a couple days with us. Make sure you like training dogs and um, own your own business. Well, the biggest reason to buy a tip-top canine is so you own your own job and you own your own future and you don't hate your life. You get an enjoyable job that brings a lot of income but is really rewarding. My name is Seth Flint and I had originally heard about tip-top canine um, through uh, my old pastors who I worked for. They trained their Great Pyrenees. Uh, with Ryan and Tip Top K9. They did a phenomenal job and uh, became really good friends with Ryan and Rachel. I was working at a uh, local church and it was a great experience. I ended up uh, leaving there and working with uh, Ryan and Tip Top K9. The biggest thing that I really, really enjoy about being self employed is that I can uh, create my own schedule. I have the ability to uh, spend more time um, with my family, my wife and my daughter. So my very favorite thing about training dogs with Tip Top Canine is that I get to work with the people. Um, obviously, I love working with dogs, but it's just so rewarding to be able to um, train a dog um, that had serious issues, whether it's behavioral or you know whatever, and um, uh, seeing a transformation, taking that dog home, and mom and dad are literally in tears because of um, how happy they are um, with the training. If somebody is interested, I'd say don't hesitate. Make sure you like dogs. Make sure that uh, you enjoy um, working with people uh, because we're not just dog trainers. We're, we are customer service people that help dogs. And, um, and so definitely, definitely don't hesitate. Just just come in and ask questions, ask all the questions you have.